Hey guys, Jason Schleifer here. I wanted to show you guys a new tool that I uh, wrote that's a mail script that allows you to do basically um, dry erase marking um, inside Maya without having to mess up your monitor and go and then sit there and erase and da 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 da. It's a, it's a fun little tool. Basically, it allows you to draw and um, thumbnail your shots directly in Maya. You can offset your timing, you can do all sorts of fun stuff. And um, it's in beta mode, but I thought I would show it to you and see if it's useful. So let's take a look at it. Okay, so here's what the tool is. Basically it's called a poor man's grease pencil. Um, a grease pencil is what was used initially to write on glass, so it's kind of harkening back to that. But what you do is you bring it up and you get this little window here, and inside the window you can see there's a bunch of different cameras you can choose from. What this lets you do is draw in any particular camera. So right now, let's put it on perspective. I'm just going to tumble my view a little bit and get this little thing out of the way. And then what you can do is you can start adding frames to draw on. So if I click on the little plus button, the little one shows up here. And then if I choose use draw tool, as soon as I start drawing, what you'll see is that I'm basically drawing a little thing in space. So let's pretend I'm going to do this little jumping guy. Now what I can do is say, okay, I want to have him stand here and I'm going to anticipate a jump up. So what I do is I drag in the timeline to the frame where I think maybe I want him to anticipate the move, and I'll click the plus button again. Now you'll notice I've got a 1 and a 6 here. When I go to frame 6, the, uh, the previous drawing that I had ends up being grayed out a little bit. Basically, it does a one frame back ghosting. So I'll draw a new frame for frame 6, and maybe I'll just sort of go like that. And if I scrub back and forth between the two, you can see that it will switch at frame 6 to the new drawing. So then maybe we go to frame 10 and I add a new frame and maybe that'll be my stretched out one so I'll just roughly do something like this and then go to frame 13 add a new frame and we'll maybe place it up here and do that who knows say frame 16 add a new frame let's move this over a tiny bit this will be my pre-contact frame, like that, and then say frame 19, add a new frame, and that will be the landing, like this, and then frame 21 will be a settle up into a default pose. Okay, so if we scrub through our timeline, you can see we have this animation. We can even hit play and play it back if we want. Now what we can do is we're not just stuck directly in this time. You can see over here in the list I've got all these different times that represent how long my animation is. Um, what, what I can do is go to any one of these and say I want to have more hang time up when he's up in this position. So I'll go to frame 16 and I'll just hit the down button. And what that will do is push all my other time further down so now he actually hangs quite a bit longer up in there. Okay? What you can also do is say, no, that's too much, so I'm going to hit up, and I'm going to move it up a little bit, so it only goes to frame 18. Or I can, in fact, go here and say, I want to change this so it's not frame 13. If I double-click on it, oops. there we go, I can then say, I want that to be at frame 12, and it'll move that one to frame 12. Okay? So you can go ahead and play with your timing in here. You can also turn on and off the visibility and the ghosting. So if we take a look at this, if I turn off pre-ghosting, it's only going to show me the ghost frames after the one I'm currently at. And if I turn off post, it's only going to show me the ghost frames before. I turn off all of them, and I have no ghost frames at all, and I get to see my animation directly like that. I can also turn off the visibility very quickly. Um, some of the other things you can do, let me just hit File New. Let's say I'm going to do a bouncing ball. What I can do is start planning out the path of action for that ball. So again, I'm going to use, I'm going to go and uh, hit plus to get a frame. You turn on Use Draw Tool. Remember, you have to click on the Use Draw Tool here to get that. And I'll just draw a path for a bouncing ball. Say it's going to do this and do that. And that's the path I want to use. If I click on the Extras tab, it has something here called Stored Frames. What that means is, is that I can take any frame that I've drawn up here and kind of save that. 
I'm going to call it path, store it. And now that path is stored right here, which means that I can template it, I can hide it, or whatever. And whatever I want to do to it, it's always going to be there. So I can go and say, I'm going to draw, start animating this ball, say frame 9. We'll have a contact frame down here. Frame 11. We'll have this frame. Frame 14. We'll put this frame here. And you can see that I'm using this path to sort of work out the path of my animation. So I know that if frame 9 is my contact frame, frame 7, or frame 9, sorry, is the squash frame. Frame 7, maybe I want that. Maybe frame 4, I'll insert a frame. It'll be like this. And so you can start working out your animation along that path. Then if I want, I can turn off the visibility of the path completely so I don't have to see it. I can turn it back on. I can even select it, go to my move tool, and move the path around if I want. I can scale it in a particular direction, whatever you want to do. You can also do the same thing with any of these guys here. If I select those, I can go to my move tool and move them around and keyframe them individually if I want. So there's a quick look at the grease pencil script. I hope you find it really useful. I use it all the time for blocking out my animation and thumbnailing and stuff like that and trying to work out how it's all going to come together. Uh, if it, it is in beta mode, so if it has any problems, simply close it, reopen it. Hopefully that will take care of it. Remember to click on the Use Draw tool in order to get it to work. And um, in order to get it, simply go to my website. Go to http colon slash slash John and his dog dot com slash mel script slash js underscore grease pencil underscore three dot mel to use it. Uh, copy that script to your scripts directory, which is, I believe, in your user documents slash Maya slash scripts. Um, copy it there. Open up Maya. Type js underscore grease pencil underscore three. Hit enter, and it should pop up. Hope you enjoy it. Thanks very much.